sex is great, she put that rest because she was a poet. And a this is Napoleon, I guess. Able was I ere I saw Elba. Able was I ere I saw Elba. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I feel smarter now. <laughs> Uh, my name is Morell. I'm from Galveston. Hi, Morell. Oh, hey. We'll uh, see you at Galveston. Two questions. One very serious. How much time do you gentlemen spend in a simulator before you get to drive the boat? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not mandatory, but we do have, like, in the first two years, all of our junior officers need to go do what's called bridge resource management, and we have a facility in Rotterdam for that. Uh, and me as captain, I came up to the ranks, I've been through several different simulator courses, and even now they call me to go uh, for port vetting in the simulator. Yeah. So I did uh, I did four days in Seattle uh, this past vacation, doing some port vetting for some ports in Alaska. Okay, second question, where do you do your positioning? Is it all when you start, or do you do it along the way? Well, I can take a guess at that one, although Francois and our inventory manager would be the best one. We mainly do most or ninety percent of our inventory in our turnaround ports, but then we have ports with specific specialties, like uh, if we go into Port Limon, they have red snapper. We can get some red snapper as long as those facilities are approved. Uh, fresh fruits and vegetables uh, are there's a plethora of places in the Caribbean to get those. So we get them there. So small items or start to run short of something, it's unexpected consumption. Our inventory manager over here, Richard is a master of, of the hint between his, <laughs> Mr. Costco, is a master of taking averages of predictions of how much uh, you guys will consume on one cruise and having that ready for you. So sometimes you roll the dice, you might have a little bit more, middle of the left, you might have to pick it up in the airport. Fire yeah. Richard, anything else? Did so I almost get that closer? Uh, well, yeah, you almost got it right. <laughs> Well, like for the longer cruises, we normally load like frozen and chill stuff. We load for 14 days, but like for produce, like fruits and vegetables, we probably load for nine days. I think it's in our top of loading because we want to maintain the freshness of the produce. So we do a top of loading in between one of the ports of call. But for the frozen stuff, we have the space, and those are frozen, so it won't affect the integrity of the item. So we load those for 14 days, but for fruits and veg. We load that for nine days, then we were top of loading to keep the product fresh. I remember uh, Limon used to be the best place for red snapper. We used to stock up on red snapper where it was fresh. Oh, so good. Did we get red snapper this time? We get red snapper? No. It was on the menu though. <laughs> I had some last night. I was feeling maybe it came from the moment. Now it's a comment. Brenda from Texas. Hi, Brenda. Good to see you again. Good to your lovely As a Dr. Pepper drinker, praise to you, knowing that Texans drink Dr. Pepper and it was on board. Kudos. Yeah. Trivia that was originally traded in Waco, wasn't it? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, most of you know most of the times the files in the Caribbean don't take the con. They're just here to advise us on the, have communication with the peers because these they speak the same language as the stevedores, right? So we work together. We have great relationships with all of our files. Aloha. Oh, Aloha. This is Emil from Hawaii. Aloha. Uh, what if uh, what happens to me if I'm on a balcony holding to the ship and there is a lightning, like we had before Cartagena, was very close, or like one thirty in the morning. Yeah. What happens? Is it dangerous for us? What what happens to the ship? Well, we have lots of procedures in place. If it's a lightning in the daytime, we'll close the pool decks and start pushing people inside the ship if it's close, but uh, we can see the thunderstorms pretty much on the radar, and as long as we can avoid that from traffic and proximity to the grounding line, we'll, we'll avoid them. Uh, only one time in history, I know, I think Mary of the Seas was hit by lightning, and it affected some of the bridge equipment, but one of the worst things that happened was it activated a general alarm, funnily enough, and they couldn't get it to stop. <laughs> Johnny Travelin, uh, about 2007, so he had to uh, grab the the key system with the override, press the button, and hold it while the electrician fixed. <laughs> 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 uh, hi. As uh, I know, a lot of you have been with World Caribbean for a long time, but I go back 53 years. Wow. In 1959. Both as a passenger and also as guest pianist and a staff member on the ship. Oh, like your parents must have the the Nordic Prince, the um, Sun Viking, uh, and on this uh, Song of America, the piano bar entertainer at the, at the America's Cup bar and the Song of uh, America, and so forth. So, I want to tell you, having been on the Voyager of the Seas, my, uh, myself and my wife, we really, uh, incorporated the, the transition of the of the original Voyager of the Seas from Barcelona. We went as far as Singapore, but it was trans transferring to uh, Sydney, Australia. And we loved that ship. It was a wonderful cruise. And I'm seeing the Voyager class for the second time now on this ship after all these years. My favorite class. And I think it's a wonderful ship. You know, looking back, we've been on other, you know, including the most recent, the Odyssey a year ago, and or six months ago, I guess it was. And um, I say, look, seeing the ship, this ship again, it brings back great memories. And I do think that this, this uh, type of ship and this ship is, is wonderful. It's had a great cruise. Thank you. I, I forgot to introduce myself. I, you know, I've I introduced everybody else here. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Chris. I'm part of the Cruise Directors team all the way from England. Do we have any veterans or active service men or women in the room? Any military veterans? So, yeah, thank you for your service. I was in the British Army for six years, so thank you for your service. Are there any other questions? Thank you, my love. Hi, I'm Laurie from Long Island, New York. Hi, Laurie. Hi. My question is, I guess, a general for all of you. I'm curious as to how you get assigned a ship, how you pick a ship, are your families with you, how long you are on the ship, you know, you, you pick the itinerary, you know, how does that work? Uh, well, most of the senior officers in the Marine Department and junior officers, we do 10 weeks on, 10 weeks off. The most junior do 14 weeks on, 14 weeks off. Uh, most hotel officers do four months on, two months off. And then I think the, the longest schedule, I think, is the, the ratings in the Marine Department do eight months on and two months off. Uh, my wife is here. She's from Lina. She comes whenever she wants. And uh, what was the other question? Oh, okay. For example, for Marine officers, mostly we're three years on one ship, and after two years, our ship manager puts the bullseye on us to prepare us to move to other ships. Yep. A lot of the times it's a... Uh, Pick of the draw, you know, who's available, who's got the most experience, who's been on that itinerary before. So, those are the things they look at. I think it's the same for hotel business needs, yep. Did you go to a bigger ship? Uh, we can, yep. Not necessarily, no. no. Uh, for me, you know, I remember when 